Welcome back, fanatics. So today I'm going to take things a little old school for me. I haven't done a video like this in a while, but I'm going back to one of my favorite topics ever, and that is subwoofers, right? So if you remember not too long ago, I did a review of the Harbottle M18X, and I showed you how I set it up and stained the box and installed everything and whatnot. And part of that was I want to do measurements, and I kind of punted that for video number two. Well, we're now on video number two, where I'm going to measure this M18X. And, you know, this was going to be a pretty straightforward thing, pull out REW measure and see how it performs. And I know it performs well already because it rocks. I mean, I've got it in my room and it just kicks butt. Um, but I actually ended up learning some stuff while I was doing this testing that was kind of eye-opening to me, right? Um, and when I talk about the measurements, I'll tell you exactly what I learned. But really, it's the relationship between the subwoofer, your amplifier, <laughs> and your house. And I don't mean room acoustics, right? We know about that. I'm talking about electricity. Um, and I was kind of shocked at what happened as I was measuring the subwoofer and the results that I got, right? And so, you know, my question to you, and, you know, let, let's find out at the end. One of the three things failed me, right? Was it the subwoofer? Did, did it just give out and start compressing as I added more juice to it? Did the amp give up in some way? Or did the power give up in some way? I mean, so, you know, when you think about that triangle, right, of amplifier, subwoofer, and electricity feed, right, um, you know, those things are all important uh, in the performance and the capabilities of the system, right, because you have to think of this stuff as a system. Um, which of those three gave up. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up REW and we'll step through the measurements that I did and I'll reveal the secret <laughs> of uh, of what was the thing that broke as I was testing and measuring the M18X from Harbottle. Here we are in REW. Um, and first off, let's level set on the setup of the equipment in the room when I did the measurement. So um, the subwoofer, the M18X, was in the center of the front room, right under the screen. Uh, microphone was in the main listening position, and it's about 10 feet away from the sub. So this is at a reasonable listening distance. This isn't near field. Um, this is, you know, where I would be sitting at. Uh, and uh, I just uh, used my normal setup and I ran REW into my processor and then sent that out to the sub and went through amps and all that kind of stuff, right? So normal, normal stuff. And this is the first sweep that I did. And, uh, you know, the first thing that's obvious is that, man, all the way down to 10 hertz, and this is 10 hertz. This thing is rocking. I mean, it is, it is, it is ready to go. Um, this subwoofer is uh, is an air pump, so to speak. It's designed to play low, and it's only rated up to 90 hertz on the top end. So uh, you should be crossing this over uh, probably in the 60 hertz range. Um, now, up here, you can see around 80, you know, 70-something. My, my room goes a little wonky, and, um, you know, you take all measurements with a grain of salt because, you know, everybody's room is different. But, you know, this thing super strong all the way down. And the idea here is to compression test meaning that we are going to raise the volume, the output level, until we see something weird happen with the chart. You know, where does it become nonlinear and, you know, what breaks, right? Um, you know, and <laughs> that's the mystery, right? So that's the first measurement. All right, uh, looks great. Go to number two, all right? And I'm bumping this up three decibels um, in, uh, in the mini DSP, uh, so, you know, I wanted to try and be precise with the, the measurements and, you know, it's, it's pretty spot on. So that's number two, no compression over, over here. This is room null. So, you know, this is, this is what rooms do. Okay. Next one. All right. Still super linear. Next one, super linear. Next one looking good. Now, remember this is one sub sealed across the room. Um, the amplifier is the uh, Synbison uh, FP10,000Q with a sing playing single channel, just one one channel, um, not bridged, so just one channel. And you know we're we're hitting 105 decibels here, right? And 105 decibels at 10 hertz is that's that's some decibels. All right, now next one, boom. Okay, <laughs> now we're up to 107 decibels at 10 hertz, right? And it's also 30 hertz. Uh, 107 decibels. Uh, 
a, a lot, right? Well, maybe 106 or something. Maybe this is one, what is this? This is, yeah, 107.8, and this is 105.83. Okay, now, this next chart is where things go wrong, <laughs> okay? Um, and I'm going to show you the chart, and then we're going to guess uh, what happened. And I know what happened, and I'll tell you what happened. But here, here's here's what the next measurement did. Okay, <laughs> um, that that's bad. Okay, uh, so you know, do you think the subwoofer had a problem? Now, you know, if somebody showed me this chart and they said, "Well, that's the last measurement," um, I would say. Probably not the sub, right? Because the sub was super linear all the way up and had not been just, you know, showing any signs of any type of concern, right? Uh, no distress, nothing weird, all right? Um, you know, also, I, I think the amp is showing that, you know, that it's not clipping or anything because, you know, that would that would be visible in the uh, in the measurement, the frequency response that we get on this, this chart as well. Well, what happened is that at this point, uh, the amplifier was sucking so much juice uh, from the wall that it popped the circuit. <laughs> so my house failed. Uh, now this, this is just on a you know, 110 uh, volt, uh, 15 amp circuit. So nothing strong or powerful. Um, and there's other stuff on here, although you know, there was really nothing else doing anything other than uh, just the processor at idle, so to speak, and the mini DSP 2x4 uh, and, and this amp. The uh, the laptop, you know, obviously has a battery, so it was plugged into the wall, but that's on a different circuit. Um, so it, it would have continued on anyway. And so this is really just I probably recording the pops and crap that came out of the, the, the subwoofer and ambient background noise and that kind of stuff after the, the, the circuit breaker popped and, and the power went off to everything. Now, I was able to replicate this uh, several times. Um, well, I did it like three times. I'm scared I'm going to start breaking stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, these are the charts. And uh, let's go ahead and close this up. And I'm going to give you what my interpretation is uh, of this M18X uh, being powered by the Sinbison FP10,000Q off of a 15-amp, uh, 110-volt circuit in, in my home. Let's get into the interpretation. So the first take home message is that this subwoofer is an absolute beast down low. I mean, it, it plays really low and really loud. And how loud can it get? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I, I, I can't feed it as much power as it needs um, with, the, with the amplification solution that I have and the power that I have to give it. Um, now, I obviously need to get a 30 amp circuit run and see what happens, but that's, uh, that's kind of difficult. Uh, now, in the big picture of things, I don't need that much bass in my room, so I probably will never do that because, uh, you know, I, I'm getting more output than I ever will use when I actually listen to anything. Um, but, you know, I think uh, that the subwoofer could suck up all this power and play this loud, th that low, uh, is a testament to its, you know, capability and its competence. Um, now, the sub is, is tiny in, in the big picture of things, right? This is a little tiny sealed 18-inch sub uh, that's not in a very big box. And, you know, go watch the, I don't know, I'll, put, I'll post a link. Go watch the build video where I show how I put this thing together and stain the box and stuff. And you can see exactly how small it is. I mean, it's not big at all. And in any reasonably sized room, if you put two or three or four of these things in there, um, oh my God, that's, that is going to be just a staggering amount of output. I mean, just staggering. So, um, you know, the, from a sub point of view, more output than I was able to measure, um, you know, and I was, you know, north of 105 decibels at 10 Hertz, uh, which is, which is a lot. So, um, you know, I don't think anybody can, can argue with, uh, with the, the goods that this uh, sub is putting up for everybody to, to see. So, I, you know, I, it, huge thumbs up. Uh, amplifier seemed to be it's doing its job as well. Um, you know, uh, FP10,000Q, uh, you know, for any of the folks that are out there using the, the Symbison or some of the others, uh, you know, that, that seems like it's pretty darn cool. Um, but, you know, what that tells me there is um, you don't really need much more than the, the 10K or the a 14K if you're going to go with the 110 power, um, you know, if you're looking at the bigger amps, you should really put it on 240, 30 amp circuits. 
to, to be able to feed this thing like, like you need it to be fed. Uh, so that's the sum uh, and you know, final result of the measurements of the subwoofer. Super strong, super awesome, sounds great, plays low, small footprint, um, you know, not much that I can find to really nitpick about. Uh, you know, the, the box comes pre-built. Now you can, you can build your own. You can just buy this driver raw and put in anything that you want. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a great set. It's uh, engineered by Harbottle to work well together, the box and the driver. And it really does. Um, you just got to come up with the right power solution to get all the performance out of it that it can output. Um, so, you know, it does need a lot of juice to do what it does. Uh, so at, when you think about the sub, you know, just think about the, the power, power requirements there um, and make sure you have something big. You know, I would love to take like a FP 22,000 Q off of a 30 amp circuit and see what happens. Um, you know, I've got a 30 amp circuit on the other side of the basement. I could get a long, thick power cord that probably cost, extension cord that probably cost 500 bucks to string across the, the room. And, uh, you know, the next time I get a, a 240 volt, um, FP 22,000 in, see what happens, see if I can melt something. Um, but, uh, I guess that's going to be another video for another day. Um, if you guys, guys have enjoyed this one, please like, and subscribe and hit the, you know, all the buttons down below and comments and all that kind of stuff, you know, I'm trying to grow the channel and hopefully, uh, you guys enjoy this content and, uh, you know, give me a little support there so I can keep bringing these to you. Uh, and, and let you know what's up with all these cool DIY subwoofers that are out there. So as always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.